In this video, we're going to be comparing the Mexican Caribbean's three most popular islands, which would be Holbox, Cozumel, and Isla Mujeres, so that you can better decide which one you're going to be adding to your travel itinerary. Don't forget to stick around till the end of this video, where we're going to share our personal opinion which one of the three islands is best to visit. We're going to be giving a breakdown of each island, but if you want very specific information on each of the individual islands, we've made full travel guides on each of them, which you can find in the playlist in our bio. If you're going to be traveling in the Riviera Maya, chances are pretty good you're going to start off in Cancun because that is where the international airport is. We're in Cancun, baby! So we're going to be talking about how far each of these islands are from Cancun. Starting with Isla Holbosch, this is actually the furthest and the most complicated island to get to. What you're going to do is you're going to be traveling from Cancun all the way to the top of the Yucatan Peninsula to a town called Chiquila. You can either do this by rental car or by bus or by taxi. And then from Chiquila, you're going to want to hop onto a ferry all the way over to Isla Holbosch. Next up will be Isla Mujeres, which is the easiest and the fastest island to get from Cancun because it's literally across Cancun mainland. You can choose any of the ferry docks located along the hotel zone or you can go to the Puerto Juarez ferry dock. And now for Isla Cozumel, you'll take a one hour trip down to Playa del Carmen. You can again do this by taxi or by bus or anything like that. And then from Playa del Carmen, you'll hop onto a ferry over to Cozumel. Now we're going to be comparing the size of each island as well as the ways of transportation you can choose from. Starting off with Holbox Island, technically because its geographic dimensions will be considering like a mid-sized island among the three we're talking about today. Something that you have to keep in mind is like fair portion of the island is a protected land. So for us, we think that it's the smallest because you have less island to explore. Cars are not allowed in Holbox Island and we'll explain about this a little bit later. However, the only two ways of transportation you will find available there will be golf cars and bicycles. Now technically Isla Mujeres is the smallest island of the three, but just like Giovanni was saying, Holbox de definitely feels smaller than Isla Mujeres because with Isla Mujeres you've got the whole island available to you. You can go all the way from Punta Sur all the way to Playa Norte. We'd say the most popular forms of transportation on island are golf carts and bicycles. However, you can also find taxis. Giovanni and I have done both golf carts and bicycles. Golf carts are a lot of fun. Definitely the most popular option on island. They're great. We would highly recommend that, although they definitely are more on the pricey side. We did do bicycles as well, which was kind of brutal if we're being honest. If you're going to be in Isla Mujeres over summer, the heights of summer or in rainy season, we probably wouldn't recommend going the bicycle route. How's everything going out there? All good. It's actually so peaceful to ride a bike. Yeah. Cozumel is significantly bigger than the other two islands, however we tried to ride a bicycle the first day to do it on a budget. Actually it was impossible for us to go around the entire island. However the next day we rented this like island car which was a lot of fun. Seems is one of the best options to navigate yourself around the island because it's actually really really big. Now we're going to be talking about with the types of accommodation you will find in each island. Starting off with Holbox, if you're looking to stay in front of the ocean or with ocean view, there are beautiful boutique hotels, but those ones will be on the pricey side. But if you're looking for budget-friendly options, in central area is where you will find Airbnbs. Starting prices with $50 approximately, you will find some decent airbnbs and some not decent airbnbs yeah i feel like just because holbosch is so small that there's like not a lot of accommodation options and because the the island has gotten so popular in the last few years that airbnbs have upped their prices to like a minimum of about 50 dollars per night and something that i can say is we paid like 50 dollars a night in mexico city for a legit hotel Whereas in Holbosch, we paid $50 a night for an Airbnb with Moldrill all over the wall. So next we're on to Isla Mujeres. You've got one or two all-inclusive hotels. We did stay in one of them before. It was really nice. Other than that, you've also got the smaller boutique hotels and you've got uh, Airbnbs. This last time that we went, we actually stayed in a hostel. Traveling to Isla Mujeres on a budget actually kind of difficult to find decent accommodation for less than $50 a night. I mean, we paid almost $50 a night for a hostel. Oh, it's very spacious actually. Partial ocean view. 
if you're going to Islam where it is on a budget, yeah. If you're going with a little bit more money to spend, you can find some really beautiful stuff. Now with Cozumel Island, similar as Isla Mujeres, you will find this kind of the same type of accommodation. However, because the island is big, you will have more chances to find like, like more decent Airbnbs. Yeah. So now we're probably onto the most important category that we've spoken of yet in this video, which would be what the beaches are actually like. Because I mean, if you're going to an island, you're obviously going to want great beaches. So starting off with, starting off, Starting off with Isla Holbosch, this is probably the most unique beach experience we've ever had. Like I mentioned earlier, Holbosch is located in the Gulf of Mexico, so you're still getting those beautiful blue waters. However, it's not Caribbean Ocean, so the water is not clear, but it's still incredibly blue. But I think the thing that makes the beaches here so unique is the fact that Number one, the water is super calm. You don't see waves at all. But number two, you can actually walk out for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. Yeah, and the water doesn't even get you to the chest. I yeah. Mean, not, not, not even to your hip. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. It makes it super kid friendly. And also, if you're not a huge fan of like swimming in the ocean and the waves and stuff, you don't have any of that in Holbosch. Now with Isla Mujeres, the number one feature of the island will be its beaches. Being Playa Norte, the number one beach in Mexico as per TripAdvisor, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You will find the bluest and the clearest water in the entire Mexican Caribbean. I mean, if you're looking to come to Mexico to find those beaches, Isla Mujeres has it. Has very calm waters and even if you go to the other side of the island, which would be Punta Sur, mm -hmm. the waters there are incredibly blue. Yeah. And then also like Giovanni was saying a bit earlier, it's just the east side of the island uh, is not actually designated for, for, for swimming. swimming. So the only option you really have is the west side, but that is where you're going to find these stunning beaches. Right off the bat, if you're looking for an island to enjoy beaches, Cozumel is probably not going to be it. The thing with Cozumel, the east side of the island, aside from capturing, catch, capturing, 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 capturing a ton of sargasm, the waters are actually really rough. It's more of like a kite surfing paradise. Uh, besides the fact that there's like no lifeguards or life on that side of the island so you wouldn't want to swim there anyways but the west side of the island which is the side of the island that wouldn't be getting the sargasm is actually majority iron shore yeah. Ar iron shore iron shore iron shore like iron man yeah we actually found it very difficult to find beaches with sand the only beach that we did find was called playa las rocas the main reason that people go to Cozumel is to go on excursions where they get to go snorkeling and diving. That's really what the island is known for. But in terms of beaches, mm -mm. Now we'll be talking about the activities available in each island. Starting off with Holbosch, something what we did and actually you have to make sure that it's happening while you are there. Mm -hmm. It's walking to Punta Mosquito Sandbar. Punta Mosquito Sandbar only appears during low tide. We were lucky that the day when we were there, we were able to walk all the way down to the other extreme of the island, very close to the protected area. And it was an amazing experience. I think it's one of the unique features that the island has. The other one will be a seasonal activity, will be swimming with the whale sharks. We haven't done it before. We actually have it in our bucket list, but I think it's coming in the near future. Yeah, uh, uh, actually our friends Will and Katie did it. You, you could do it from a few places here. They did theirs from, from Playa, but they did it and they said that it was amazing. So we'd love to do it. Just it's not a budget friendly activity at all. It would cost for the two of us about 300 US dollars, I believe, to do it. So that's why we haven't done it yet, but we are going to do it one day but also if you're planning on coming here specifically for that just note that it there's a very very specific period in which it operates because i mean the the whale sharks migrate they're wild animals if you don't know the yucatan peninsula is completely flat so you never see like mountains or like cliff faces or anything like that Probably the most unique activity we did when we were in Isla Mujeres was go to Punta Sur, which is where you're going to see these beautiful cliff faces, not to mention like beautiful. 180 views of the ocean and of the island and just the blue incredible waters. You've also got the museum that is located at Punta Sur, which is very interesting to see. Aside from that, it's definitely worth stopping over in town to go and find the colorful steps. You can't really do anything there, but if you're a photographer, I'm sure you'll definitely enjoy taking a few pictures there because it's just so colorful and vibrant. Other than that, the island is actually really colorful and really beautiful, specifically downtown. All of the little houses and things are all 
painted different colors. It's all like pastel vibes. So if you're a photographer, this is really where you want to come and bring your camera. Other than that, Isla Mujeres is obviously one of the main places to do the whale shark tours as well, but we already went over that. And then lastly, one of the best things to do in Isla Mujeres, we would say, is renting a golf cart. Specifically, if you're just going there for a day trip, just taking the golf cart around the island is an activity in itself, and it's so much fun. We did that the first time we went, and even though it poured with rain, it was awesome to be able to see the island all in one go. I think it's about an hour and a half to get the whole way around. Lastly with Cozumel, if Cozumel is known for something it will be for its snorkeling and its diving so you can do this by taking a boat tour or if you are lucky you will find some spots where you can do it for free. However, one of the highlight activities you can do there will be El Cielo. Basically what El Cielo is, is you, you can't actually reach it by land. You have to take a boat tour. And they take you out to the spot where there are usually hundreds of starfish on the bed of the ocean. The water is incredibly clear so you, you be able to see these starfish so beautifully. Unfortunately, the, the day we went, the ocean was raging. I think if I've ever come close to drowning, it would be that day. It was absolutely wild. It, it really was unpleasant for us. We, we saw like two starfish for a split second before the ocean dragged us along. But typically on a good day, this is a stunning activity to do. You'll get to see hundreds of starfish. The water should be really, really clear. We also stopped off at a few other like snorkeling spots and the snorkeling was amazing. Another activity we strongly recommend to do is renting an island car like we did. Um, you can also ride a bicycle, but if you want to get the most of the island, we'll be renting a car. Also, you will be able to go to El Cedra, which is a small Mayan village with a small Mayan ruins, which is very impressive to find in an island in Mexico. And if you go to El Cedra, you have to go and visit our friend Alba. You cannot miss her. She'll probably be flagging you down. She sells coconuts and she is hilarious. Donde? Fresh coconut de cedral. Okay. Y hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Another activity you can do in Cozumel will be visiting the cruise ship shops. Cozumel is known as the main port of the Mexican Caribbean, so you will find all of these shops along the Malecon area and in Centro. So if you want to get some souvenirs, that's the place where you want to get them. Now we're going to be talking about the main reasons why we recommend each island. Starting with Holbox, something that we feel from Holbox is you feel like you are in a real island because of its vibe, you can feel like that laid back and charming of the, the area so you feel like you are in a real Mexican island. Another good feature that we feel like Holbox is very unique for, you will be walking along the sandbar area which was Punta Mosquito. We think that is a very unique experience. And I think the feature what we enjoy the most will be the street art. They have beautiful street art everywhere on the island, even at the beach. There are some structures that have beautiful murals, beautiful paintings. I think it's one of the things that we love about this, this place. Yeah, photographer's dream. We couldn't talk about the pros of visiting Isla Mujeres without mentioning the beaches once again. The beaches in Isla Mujeres are just phenomenal. Everything you could possibly dream about visiting a Caribbean destination is what you're going to find on those beaches on the west side of the island. The water is phenomenally clear. It's just, it's just an absolute dream. Yeah. Other than that, like I had mentioned before, downtown is super fun and colorful and walkable. The streets are tiny, it's very cute. It's, it's got a really great vibe there in downtown. Lastly, with Cozumel, if you are into snorkeling or diving, this will be the best spot for you because the experience of diving on this, or even snorkeling is just amazing. Yeah. As we mentioned before, if you have the chance to rent a car, visiting El Cedra will be a unique experience if you want to get a little bit more of the history of Cozumel as well as its Mayan roots. The island really caters for everyone's preferences. If you like the, the, the buzzing social kind of like scene that happens by the cruise ship ports, they've got that. But if you really want to get away and feel like you're alone on a, on a little island and really be like where the locals are, you've got that available to you as well. Wagwan Bobo. So obviously we can't mention the good without mentioning the bad, although visiting an island in the Mexican Caribbean is not bad, but there are just a few points that we'd like to touch on starting with Isla Holbosch. Like we mentioned before, the sand. If you're not one of those types of people who likes to go to the beach and bring a lot of sand home with you, the sand is honestly, it's it sticks to everything. It's, it's, it's seriously that powder thin that it's going to be in your hair, in your bag, it's gonna be everywhere for the rest of your life. So if you don't like that, 
pole bosch is probably not the place for you because like we said the only form of transportation is golf carts and scooters which makes the island so loud and you just can't ex escape this constant hum from the motors of the of the vehicles which kind of sucks in our yeah. opinion and like we mentioned in the beginning of the video, none of the roads in Holbosch are actually paved, which is cool. It gives it more of an island vibe. However, just be very aware of when you plan on visiting Isla Holbosch because the issue that occurs with this is because in rainy season, the roads actually have to be closed down. They get flooded very easily. But also, even if there's just a little bit of a downpour, Giovanni and I weren't even there over rainy season. We just happened to be there when it had rained just a little bit. And just that little bit of rain made these big, massive puddles of mud. So it's kind of difficult to navigate through with a bicycle. And sometimes it gets so bad that they can't even ride the golf carts through that. Second on the list will be Isla Mujeres. If you are looking to go to Playa Norte, if you're, if you're going between nine and four, which is the day visitors time, it will be super packed. You we will recommend to go a little bit further to um, Playa Caleta or Mosa Caleta, which is a little bit quieter. However, the central area gets very busy. Now we're on to Isla Cozumel. The thing about Isla Cozumel that we probably dislike the most is because it is a cruise ship port, it just feels very commercialized, like constructed, curated, which we don't typically love. But the, the good thing about that is you can escape that feel by heading down to the other end of the island. If you plan on going on tours and things like that, just keep in mind that you've got tens of thousands of people getting off of these cruise ships every single day to hop onto the tours or either to stay down at the main um, cruise ship port. So something that we can actually recommend is there is a website just over here that you can check where it will tell you how many cruise ships are scheduled to land on Ireland on any given day and there will be days where there are less people getting off than others. If you're wondering how many nights you should plan to stay on each of these islands we're going to be sharing the minimum amount of nights we would recommend staying if you really want to be able to experience um, the majority of what each island has to offer. So starting off with is the whole wash because the island is really small and it, it really doesn't take very long to navigate around the island and also for the fact that there aren't really many activities to do, I'd say minimum would be two nights, maximum would be four nights. Second in the list will be Isla Mujeres. Being Isla Mujeres, the smallest island within the three we're talking about today. Even though you can do Isla Mujeres on a day trip from Cancun, we strongly recommend to stay there for two to three nights because there are plenty of activities that you can do in the island. So if you want to have also an entire day to be chilling at the beaches, which are the most amazing beaches in the entire Mexican Caribbean, two to three nights will be perfect. Yeah, but if, if I could stay longer in Isla Mujeres, I would stay up to a week. Those beaches really are just so beautiful. Beautiful. Last but not least would be Isla Cozumel. As we've mentioned, Cozumel is significantly larger than the other two islands and there are quite a lot of activities to do in Cozumel. So we'd say just to get a good feel of the island, three to four nights as a minimum would be perfect. However, if you are going there to do a lot of snorkeling, a lot of diving, then of course you'd want to book even up to a week, I'd say. So I know in the video we promised that we'd be sharing the best island to visit, but the thing is Giovanni and I have got slightly different opinions. We disagree. We agree to disagree. <laughs> we agree to disagree on this one. Let's agree to disagree. The island that I loved the most was uh, Isla Holbosch, just because it's like, it really feels like an island. I feel like it is just a very unique experience because like we said, there's no paved roads, there's no cars, it's very small, very walkable, there's just millions of palm trees. It just feels like an island. In my case will be Isla Mujeres because nowadays when the Caribbean Sea is affected by sargassum all year round pretty much, Isla Mujeres will be one of the places where you will find zero to low sargassum on the island and if you are really looking for those beautiful Caribbean beaches, Isla Mujeres is the right place. Yeah. Of the three islands, Cozumel is probably the only one that I, I mean, I don't feel like I need to visit Cozumel again, but would definitely go back to Holbosch and Isla Mujeres. If you enjoyed today's videos, please don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel. Share this video to whoever wants to visit one of these three islands. And that being said, we will see you in the next episode. Hasta, Hasta luego. Join us in the next episode where we take you on an epic food tour through Playa del Carmen. This stuff is amazing.